Hey guys, so recently I've been getting a lot of uh, questions on my web zone about the techniques and gear I use. So today in the video we will be going over how I achieve my signature sound. So it all starts with the saxophone. So the neck perfectly aligns with the Fibonacci sequence. The keys perfectly lubed with uh, oil every time I play. Bell, perfect. Circle. Everything, just overall perfect. So for my reads, uh, I have a pretty strict selection process. Usually a 10 pack maybe has one. You may have to go through multiple boxes. Usually they just throw out the shitty ones. They, 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 there's no use of those. You break them in half or stomp on them, you know. So once you find that right one, you gotta sand it down to the right thickness and then I coat it in a special sealant that increases longevity and brings out that darker tone of the reeds. So I've noticed the recent trend in 3D printed mouthpieces and while I appreciate the effort that people are going through to get these mouthpieces, I tried them out, just not my style. They're too weak, they provide a very plastic sound. For the saxophone, you really want to achieve that woodwind sound. So. I thought paper mouthpiece, paper mache mouthpiece, not a wooden mouthpiece. Some of my clients had uh, problems with splinters. Now for my ligature, I use what most people might call a zip tie, but I like to call it a omnidirectional reed securing device or ORSD for short. For the style of saxophone I play, I was really looking to get that uh, homemade feeling from this and the ORSD really provided that for me. So I often surprise people about how many influences I draw from outside the saxophone world. My main thing is I just want to sound as little like a saxophone as possible. The biggest things that inspire me are Nate Dogg's first verse and Shake That, three to the one, from the one to the three. Rudy Giuliani's 2016 Republican National Convention speech. For the purposes of the media, I did not say all of Islam. Dan Aykroyd's appearances on Larry King. I don't think we will ever have a formal relationship, a formal contact with any alien species out there, especially after 9-11. The Third Amendment of the Constitution and my saxophone technician, Lucas Feather. Two years ago, I snuck into a bar and saw this man, Lucas Feather, up on stage playing the saxophone. I thought to myself, I can never let that man touch another musical instrument. So I hired him to ensure that he would never play saxophone in front of a live audience again. So to talk about my gig setup, I brought in my saxophone technician and, as you all know, my inspiration, Lucas Feather. So uh, I guess I guess we'll just start with the with the basic saxophone stand. You don't really have one. Usually we make ours out of Lincoln Logs. Tinker but... Toys. Tinker Toys. Tinker Toys? Why the hell would you think it's Lincoln Logs? We didn't have any of those. It all broke apart before we got here. Um, I wonder who faults that was. Yeah, so for the saxophone pickup, I had originally suggested that we, you know, buy a... Pieces of Yamaha shit. Pieces or, of shit. Don't use the, the original the sax pickups. Aaron actually had a really good idea yeah. that instead we'll just use a six-string It was my idea. Pickup. My idea. Um, and we're, we we spent about twelve hundred dollars trying to, to fit that on his tenor, but easy money. All right, it's time to give this baby a, a run for its money. Yeah, man, that that sounds really good. Yeah, so you know, you just always got to remember that uh, no matter how nice your equipment is, you always got to practice. Wait, where did I put my fucking phone? I can't believe I lose my shit all the time. Hey, you're just stupid. The the idea behind it is that the, the, the stage is what you need to die. Yeah, I remember watching you. So get down. Scoot your ass. This is <laughs> like this is why. Spaniel. This is why. 